It's been quite a morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How many of you are in currently in a relationship? Well, it depends. <laughs> <laughs> and how many of you are currently in a relationship with someone who triggers you emotionally every now and again? Uh, past tense. <laughs> okay. All right. How many of you have ever been in a relationship <laughs> with someone or something that pushes your buttons? Oh, you buttons. <laughs> Most of you, right? Well, I am intrigued by relationships. And so well, the main reason I'm giving this speech is so I can learn a little bit more about them. I believe that everything in life is about relationships. Whether or not we're having relationships with our family members, our uh, friends, our neighbors, our co-workers, employees, employers, clients, the machines that we interact with, the food that we eat, the air that we breathe, our bodies, thoughts, feelings, everything that we do every day is in relationship with something or someone. And the constant, the common denominator in all of those relationships is our self. And I am beginning to believe that the key the relationship with ourselves, and thus the relationship with everyone else is the relationship that we have with what Carl Jung called the shadow, which he defined as basically anything in our unconscious that's hidden or undeveloped. We've all had experiences with people who push our buttons. This, I'm going to tell you, is the clue to your shadow. When your buttons are being pushed, you can be sure that your shadow is at work. So today, I hope to share with you why we develop a shadow, what damage it can do as long as it remains hidden, and how we can cultivate a relationship with it to increase our sense of well-being and improve all of our relationships. So I want to start with the foundation, ourself. Because it is the foundation of all the relationships, I think that it's really important that we take some time to get to know ourselves. What makes me tick? What are my driving needs and desires? What are my guiding principles and values? What about my strengths? And what is it that triggers me into unconscious emotional reaction? Human beings, we are a paradox of opposites. We're both compassionate and cruel. We're open-minded and judgmental. And we're creative and we're also destructive. We have pleasurable and we have painful experiences. Pleasurable experiences, no problem. Basically, we use them to help us grow, to help us achieve success. But our painful relationships can sometimes stick us. They can sometimes keep us from manifesting that which we really want. So that's why I want to talk about them. <laughs> so, when you were a child and you had a painful experience, basically you had some really strong emotions, shame, fear, anger, whatever. You had a temper tantrum. You embarrass the hell out of your family, probably in the middle of somewhere, you know, the big store. And then you got over it and you went on with your life. But sometimes, every now and again, these painful experiences are a little bit more intense. And the emotions that we feel are a little bit stronger than we feel like we're able to deal with. And so what happens is we try to deny them. <laughs> We try to suppress them, repress them. We do anything to get rid of them. And we bury them deep in our subconscious mind. This is what becomes our shadow. It's all the feelings, all the emotions, all the traits and qualities that we have that we can't handle, that we feel are unacceptable, or that we think that somebody else would be unacceptable. So we bury them. We bury them. They become our shadow. And the problem with the shadow is, just like the monsters under your bed, 
it gets really big, it gets really powerful, and it gets really, really, really scary because it's hidden. But the shadow, being kind of selfish, primitive, and quite volatile, doesn't like to stay hidden. But while it is hidden, it gets kind of caught up in all of our other things down there, like our instincts and our creative energies and all of that sort of stuff, and it becomes part of our default operating system. So have you ever had the experience where you were kind of, you know, talking with somebody and maybe you were in a relationship with somebody and um, you were talking about something and all of a sudden you sort of like woke up and went, what the heck just happened to that sweet, loving, in charge, passionate person that I think I am? Anybody ever had that experience? That was your shadow at work. And the thing is with the shadow is that it will come out in all kinds of unpredictable ways. So the boogeyman that we've created now becomes very threatening to us. So we try all kinds of strategies. Again, denial doesn't work. So we start creating these things called masks. These are our personas, our false personalities or identities that we show to the world to make everybody think that we're really sweet and kind and loving and in charge and confident. When actually, a lot of times, we're not all of those things. But we're so frightened that we're really this horrible shadow thing, we don't want anybody to see it. So we create these, create these things. Very clever of us to do that, unfortunately, they don't work either. And what happens is, whenever we're triggered by some sort of emotional overwhelm, we start bubbling out our shadows, right? And <laughs> it always happens at the most inopportune times. Like when we're at work, ever done that? I wanted to do that this morning. Or when we're trying to run a nation. The thing is, is that we keep kind of coming up with these strategies, which may, has made us, people are saying now, that we are the most obese, addicted, and in debt adult cohort in history. But none of those strategies work either. So now we get really, really creative. And we come up with something called projection. And this is where we take all of those unacceptable shadow parts and we project it out onto somebody else. Now, you are the hostile one. You're the cruel one. You're the evil one. And I am in charge and confident and loving and sweet. Great, right? Perfect, beautiful strategy. Guess what? It doesn't work either. So, now we've got this big ball of shadow mass in there. And it is running the scene. Okay? It's running the scene because it's down in there with our instincts and it's taking over at unpredictable times. And what happens a lot of times is that the unconscious and the conscious get in conflict. The unconscious wants, has one agenda and the conscious has another agenda and they go to battle. But the problem is, is the unconscious is more powerful because it's hidden. So guess what? It wins. And we end up sabotaging our success. Ever had the desire that you wanted to do something? I see this with my clients all the time. They want to lose weight. They want to exercise. They want to have success in their life. But guess what? They don't. It happened in my own life. I wanted to be here on time. I wanted to have my computer and all straightened out. Um, <laughs> it didn't work out exactly the way I planned it, although it may have worked out better. But the thing is, is that it's not our authentic feelings that are the problem here. Even our feelings of cruelty and, uh, and, and revenge, those are feelings that every one of us in here have had at one time or the other. They're normal, natural, human traits. The fact is that we are a paradox. We are both beauty and beast. And 
So that's why I think that it's really important that we learn how to form a healthy relationship with our shadow. And if we can do that, we'll be less likely to be commandeered by it. We'll be less likely to blow up at inopportune times, pretend like we're somebody that we're not, choose inappropriate partners, or try to numb our pain and discomfort with unhealthy behaviors. Great. So how do we do this? Well, there are a whole lot of strategies out there, apparently. But it, what I found with my studies is that the easiest way to get started is basically to start to notice what's going on. Have an intention that you really want to see, what is this part of me that I'm not really sure but sometimes takes control. And you need to have non-judgmental awareness about it. You know, when it comes up, you cannot be aware that you feel ashamed or you feel angry or you're having these feelings. Remember, the authentic feelings are not the problem. But you just want to notice, when you're being triggered, notice it. When you see protect, uh, repeating patterns, particularly, of people that come into your life that, that trigger you similarly, or situations, anytime you have emotional overwhelm, if you can see everything in your environment as an opportunity to get to know your shadow and form a relationship with it, then you can start to appreciate it as the positive thing that it is. Learn to listen to what's going on in your thoughts and your feelings and respect all of your feelings. Accept them all, but don't identify with them. I am not angry and cruel. I am feeling angry and I want to kill you right this minute. But don't act out on that. That's not a, that's not a good thing. <laughs> um, if you can do this, what the shadow can actually do in partnership with you is to help you resolve all of your um, painful, wounded parts and, and help you meet your unmet needs. This rewires your brain and helps you make new behaviors. Once you do that, you don't have the expectations that other people will make you happy. It'll increase your sense of well-being and improve all your, all your relationships. Give it a shot. Thanks.